Good evening. It was uh, spring semester of 2022. I was discussing with Dr. Spees why I couldn't be on the singing group for the school. To my regret, I responded, well, it just doesn't seem natural for me to do right now. I then continued to ask him, Dr. Spees, so how have you st stayed so consistent throughout the years here at KNBC? He looked at me with his famous mischievous grin and said, by doing the things that didn't seem natural. <laughs> Touche. In more ways than one, some might say that it's not natural or normal to choose a small Bible college in the hills of Eastern Kentucky. In fact, over my time here, I've had many passing comments about why I would choose a small, a small school to prepare for ministry and to get biblical foundation, to which I may respond like Dr. Spees in saying the fact that it's not natural or normal may point toward the truth that it is good. And I'm proud to say that my time here at KBC has been so good. I owe much to Kentucky Mountain Bible College. My testimony starts as a three-year-old boy, arriving with my parents who began their work here almost 20 years ago. This place is truly my childhood. I remember running through the cornfields, pretending to be in battle with each corn stalk. I remember running away from Herschel, who had caught me exploring the maintenance building. <laughs> I remember running in the gym with college guys who I inspired to be like one day. And I remember running into my dad's arms as he came back from a long choir tour. I guess you could say I did a lot of running. While some may assume that it was easy for me to decide to choose this college where I had grown up for many years, this was not the case for me. It was my senior year in high school, spring 2018, when God began to remind me of the calling he had given me as a boy. At 14, I experienced the voice of God who gave me inspiration to strive to be a man like those who had encouraged and inspired me. Names like Chad Forte and Danny Spies, who were my youth pastors, invested in my life and helped open the doors for me to listen to God's calling upon my life. And remembering this calling as a senior, I began to struggle deciding between whether I would choose a Bible college to pursue this calling or to pursue something like college athletics. I had many people who had came to a similar, I had met many people who had came to a similar dilemma. And to my surprise, I was in this crossroad. While I believe God's grace could have still led me into his will by not attending KNBC, I believe God placed the question on my heart through a conversation with my cousin, Austin Line, where he asked me, where is it that you could draw closer to God? This was the same type of question that David Lormer would ask me as I talked with him about what it would look like to come here to KNBC. David has always been very intentional with those he recruits. I've seen it firsthand as one who has been recruited by him and one who has helped recruit under him. David has brought a lot of peace through conversation we've had about calling, vision, and the free will to choose under God's grace. David, I want to thank you for being intentional with me. I've known you for a long time, and I thank you for encouraging me to come to KNBC. I've benefited much from knowing you. Upon arriving at KNBC my first semester, as it seems to be the case for uh, many freshmen who attend, I dealt with an issue of pride. I believe that because of my dilemma of not choosing something like college athletics, I somehow was making a bigger sacrifice than others. I believe that this pride came through and negatively affected my relationship with God and my relationship with some friends, to which I, over the years I've tried to mend and make right. It was through the teaching of ones like Mr. Lormer and Mr. Street, who would often ask a question personally and in class, how is your devotional life? Have you started in Genesis and gone through Revelation? As students, we've all heard this. And through this encouragement to seek God in his word, God began to speak to me about my pride issue. I give credit to all these professors like Tom Lormer, David Street, Barbara Deaton, David Bagby, Rick Brookins, and Dr. E, many others. But I have sat in these professors' classes and been so encouraged to seek God in my life and to surrender to him daily. Thank you, professors, for caring about our hearts and our eternal destination, I owe much to you all. I owe much to Dr. Spees. It was Dr. Spees who saw the potential in me my first semester and began giving me opportunities for ministry and work here at KNBC. I have seen Dr. Spees in roles of bold leadership as well as humble and small prayer meetings held in this chapel. I've enjoyed traveling with you, having conversations about fishing in Alaska, 
Uh, even though you were drifting in and out of consciousness while, I, while you were in the passenger seat and I was driving, somehow he would fall asleep in the middle of our conversation, 20 miles down the road, wake up and continue right where we left off. <laughs> Dr. Spees, I remember very well. I was struggling financially through a certain semester and you came to me and you offered help. While I haven't taken every opportunity you have given me, I want to thank you for your investment to me in this college. You've been an example of godly leadership to me, and I highly look up to you. I owe much to Mr. Whistler. It was my first semester when I truly began to develop my relationship with Mr. Whistler. Uh, as a boy, I viewed him as just a kind, bald-headed man. <laughs> but through the years, especially now, I view Mr. Whistler as a close friend, a mentor, and one of the best men I know. <clears throat> Mr. Whistler has given me many opportunities through singing groups, choir, and public relations. Through this, I've learned much. I remember very well traveling for the school and being confident in the leadership of Mr. Whistler. Through meetings, I was always encouraged by the clarity and structure and motivation that you brought. We've traveled a lot of places together. We've had a lot of fun. We've worked together, we've ministered together. I want to deeply thank you for your investment in my life ever since I was a young boy. You've seen me grow up. You've seen me go through some difficult situations. You've worked with me on those. And most recently, you were the one who helped open the door for my opportunity at Oakdale Christian Academy. Alongside the many cups of coffee you've let me grab after chapel, thank you for your mentoring, your sense of humor, and your heart for God. Now, if you can remember back to uh, my, my uh, senior year of 2018, it was my graduation, and a man named Jim Nelson decided to show up. With his sweet wife, Katie, they showed up and surprised me. But this is who Jim Nelson is. He's a friend to all. And as it has been a common theme throughout my testimony, I've known Jim Nelson since I was a boy. I'll share it quick. If you've uh, listened to Adventures in Odyssey, for some reason, I always viewed Jim Nelson as John Avery Whitaker. <laughs> if you haven't had the chance to listen, trust me when I say the comparison is very accurate. <clears throat> I owe much to you, Mr. Nelson. <clears throat> I've been under your mentorship for a while now, and <clears throat> I'm not exaggerating when I say every time that we've met, I've been enriched. I've been encouraged. <clears throat> we share uh, the same interest in things like jazz, coffee, Miguel's photography, the great city of Seattle, and what some might call organized chaos. <laughs> but as we know it, it's just the groove. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Nelson, for all the laughs, the times of correction that you gave to me. And the many prayers, in my eyes, you are an example of one who walks with God and lives like Jesus. I can say confidently that I'm here today because of you. You've encouraged me to keep going and to draw closer to God. I love you, Mr. Nelson. I owe much to my friends, Heath, Matthew, if they have already mentioned, we've done some crazy stuff together, which I'm not willing to admit everything we've done. <laughs> but I want to thank you for your friendship, especially on, upon returning from uh, COVID and my time away, you all, I've grown much closer to you all. And I thank you for the great times that we've had, great talks we've had. You all have been a benefit to my time here at KBC. As well as Seth Fellows, Johnny Juca, and Sammy Mukandama, I owe much to you all. Seth, my first roommate. I know for a fact God crossed our paths intentionally. I probably wouldn't have. We've done a lot of things together, a lot of great things. We've traveled the country together. We've grown closer to God together. I've seen Seth grow, and Seth has helped me grow throughout these four years. Seth is one of my closest friends. I'm so thankful that God did cross our paths. Samuel Mukundama, my brother on the ball court. My first semester, I could see his sensitivity to the Lord's voice, and it inspired me. I have appreciated our light, late night talks, our prayers together, and our hoop sessions. He has been a true example of what a true and godly friend is. To my Romanian brother, Johnny Juca, thank you for your real friendship. There's a realness to our relationship. Only you know the difficult conversations about life and the Christian walk that we have had over the years. 
You have encouraged me in many ways, and you have always been there. I have been so appreciative of our friendship. I owe much to my family, my dad, my mom, my brother Lawrence. It's hard to know where to begin. I'm lucky to have you guys here. Dad, you've always been uh, so, so kind and considerate of my dreams and goals. <clears throat> you've always been the enabler. You've helped me to go out and to pursue the things that I've loved to do. We are very similar. In fact, we're too similar sometimes, Dad. We can get talking for way too long. <clears throat> but you knew and saw my dreams as a boy. You saw the things I wanted to do, and you so gently led me to seek the dreams and plans that God might have for me. You have represented what it means to be a provider, leader, and man of God. When I started at KMBC, I remember telling you that if I had to go in debt for Bible college, I didn't want to do it. <clears throat> now I have completed that goal because of your support and because of your encouragement. <clears throat> Thank you for every single letter. Thank you for every letter Dad, that you've written to me over the years. <clears throat> They've helped me in more ways than you know. I can truly say I want to be like my dad one day when I grow up. You're the best man I know. I've been proud to follow in your footsteps and pursuing a degree at Bible college. And I know I'm here today because of you. I love you, Dad. It's just going to get harder because, Mom, you're next. You've been my biggest fan. My mom used to write notes in my uh, basketball uh, bag. I'm your biggest fan, and I've kept a lot of those. And I remember the days with you where you also would listen to my dreams and goals. And uh, you were there to listen and help me pursue them, some which you knew were kind of crazy and not reachable, but you still have represented what it means to be a godly mother through all you do. You've been an inspiration to me, Mom, because of your humility. <clears throat> Not many people know about your story. But it's a beautiful story that I can say because of your sacrifice. Even before I was born, I'm here today. <clears throat> And I've been able to succeed at these four years of college because of your sacrifice. I love you, Mom. Thank you so much. Thank you for all of your care packages, your letters that were always sent at the right time and with care. You've always been so kind and gracious to me. I love you so much. My brother Lawrence, he's not here. I wish he was because what I'm about to say is very important. I have not been able to score as much as him as he did in high school basketball. But I can say I got a college degree before him, so I'll take it as a win. <laughs> Lawrence, you've taught me what it means to work hard. Throughout my four years, if it wasn't for uh, ones like my brother and a man named Greg Brownwood who gave me the opportunities for work, I want to be debt free. Lawrence, you know when to speak, and you have taught me when to shut up, which is probably needed right now. But I love you, and I thank you for your encouragement to finish my four years here. You're one of the best men I know, and I want to thank you for being my brother. Finally, I want to thank my Lord and Savior. Scripture says, Father, that you not only know me, but you even know the hairs upon my head. I believe, God, that you have known and orchestrated the dreams in my life, and you have been so gracious to me in pursuing them. You've seen me in my weakness. You've seen me in my embarrassing moments. You've seen me in my failures, but you have daily spoken to me and called me to surrender and trust you. I thank God for the gift of salvation and the call to sanctification. And as Psalm 13 says, even though, even through it all, I will praise you for your faithful love and how you have been so generous to me. Thank you for meeting me here at Kentucky Mountain Bible College. There has been a prayer that I have prayed every single day, almost every single day, since my freshman year. Lord, thank you for this day. Help me to make the most of it, to pursue your peace and live out your purpose. I will be continuing to pursue God's peace and his purpose in my life at Oakdale Christian Academy, where I serve and work in the residential life, and, and I will soon be director of activities. I'll appreciate your prayers, but I am so much in debt 
to KMBC for preparing me for ministry and the opportunities that have come. As Jim Elliott says, wherever you are, wherever you are, be all there. Therefore, wherever God leads, I want to be all in. Thank you, friends, family, and Kentucky Mountain Bible College. I owe you much.